Welcome, friends. I hope that you are enjoying the economics in your postgraduate level. There are uh, two papers uh, which are very unique, uh, wherein all your economic theories and uh, the practices which you have been observing in your daily life are being blended. And this paper is uh, the development economics. The paper number is 14 and 16. Now, the gist of these two papers are converted into three interesting modules that I'm going to uh, talk about. In the broad heading of that, uh, these modules would be, we can call it as micro planning framework. In this framework, the first module will talk about wherein you will be able to understand the basic idea of micro planning, the genesis of micro planning, the justification of micro planning, and basically the framework wherein we define a micro area or a region. This is something very important. And the second last module that is going to be discussed is going to concern about the fundamental theoretical framework in which all the development activities are to be carried out at the micro level. We will be talking about uh, the central place theory. We will be talking about the growth uh, pole theory. So the second last module would more and more focusing on the theoretical framework. And the last interesting module would uh, blend the theory, uh, the growth theories, the development theories that you have been teaching, you have been uh, studying, you have been analyzing during last two years in your, at your postgraduate level with some of the concrete case studies which we have selected from developing countries but mainly focusing in the context of India. So these are the broad structure of three modules. Today I am going to talk about uh, the module and the title of uh, that module is the basic framework of micro planning wherein I will be talking about the basic idea of micro planning then I will be discussing with you the genesis of micro planning and definitely since we are in one of the developing economies, India is a very important case study. It's, it's a very important example where the whole experimentation of micro planning has already been done. So I will talk about the theoretical framework of micro planning by giving the example from the Indian economy and I'm calling it a genesis of micro planning. And then we will be talking about why this whole framework of micro planning is needed and lastly i'll be talking about a very unique theoretical framework which is called how you define a micro area or theoretically we call region and then we'll sum up uh, so that a framework uh, can be made uh, wherein all our students can study and can uh, undertake their future studies in a more systematic manner now you see uh, in these uh, three modules as I was mentioning that the essence of development economics is going to be discussed. Many of the development economists, those who have been working in the last 20 or 30 areas, there are some of the eminent uh, Nobel laureates like Amartya Sen, uh, Williamson, Mohammed Yunus. Uh, they all are economists and they mainly focused uh, on rest of the other things. They focused on the whole issue of participatory development wherein they try to identify the planning processes at the lowest level. Now, as I was mentioning that in this whole discussion, I will not make my subject just talking about the theoretical framework, but I will be mainly giving you a lot of illustrations based on developing countries, but mainly giving you the illustration from India. Why I'd like to focus on Indian economy to explain this idea because I know that uh, this postgraduate level is your terminal postgraduate degree. And after that, you would like to enroll yourself for MPhil or for PhD courses. Majority of uh, our students, they really enjoy working in the area of development economics. You might have heard about uh, human development idea. There are a lot of modules in these uh, two papers which are talking about the basic idea of human development. and the interesting challenge for the 21st century is uh, to really improve the quality of life and many of our students they would like to work in that area to really understand the quality of human life and to conduct uh, the research work in that area so what i am saying is that the understanding of this whole 
idea of basic framework of micro planning will definitely help you to even conduct uh, your own research studies at uh, MPhil level and PhD level. Uh, so that's why uh, this is uh, going to be a very interesting uh, framework. With this uh, background, let us understand what is uh, micro planning. When we talk about micro planning, first let us understand what is planning. I'm not going to repeat because there are separate papers on economic planning, but I simply would like to tell you that planning means a state intervention and uh, a state intervention into the market mechanism. So there are two forces. One is uh, the market mechanism, which uh, really settles uh, all the uh, kind of uh, demands and other one is the state intervention and you know that especially after the second world war uh, especially uh, during the 50s when the underdeveloped economies are which were earlier the colonial regions ruled by European countries now when they got freedom they started planning because the Russian uh, planning model was very popular at that time. So that time that basic idea of macro planning was there. Macro planning means when you take the whole area, the bigger country as a planning unit. Now when you talk about micro planning, micro planning is planning at the lowest level. There are a planning wherein you decide the location allocation function. Now this is very important to understand because you allocate resources as a state intervention at a particular point of time and at a particular point of space and then you try to maximize the social choice at that particular point of time and at a particular point of space. Now the micro planning means when you decide location allocation function decision keeping in view the potentialities, the opportunities and the constraints of a particular area. So for all practical purpose, any small area planning can be called a micro planning. But that itself is uh, not sufficient to explain because you know we have to identify a viable unit uh, of uh, micro planning that uh, is technically known as uh, the region or a micro area. So any planning which is being carried out for a micro area where you try to see the possibilities of the local development where you try to understand the capabilities which are available in particular area and then you know you try to intervene into that market mechanism and then try to maximize the social opportunities. Technically any micro planning can be defined as integrated area development planning. Now this is something very important. Now integrated means you are integrating three important components which are available which are found in the social and economic life of a particular region or of a particular country or of a particular state. Now one is called you are integrating different sectors which means that when you want to develop a particular area you cannot develop the area unless you focus on various development sectors like what you call these are the agricultural sector, these are the industrial sectors, these are the service sectors. So this sectoral integration is uh, uh, one very important feature of micro planning. Now the second important part is that you are integrating different sections of the society. What I mean by that sections of society, which means that your society is not homogeneous. Your society is divided into certain sections like you have agricultural laborers, like you have rural population, urban population, like you have uh, big farmers, small farmers, industrial workers. When you focus on all these sections and then try to see the backward and forward linkages for development, that itself is easier said than done activity. But unless you integrate different sections, you will not be able to achieve or you will not be able to maximize 
the development potential that is prevalent in a particular area. You also have to see the different uh, community composition, gender composition of that particular area. So roughly we can say that uh, integration of different sections into the planning process is another important indicator of uh, micro planning. The third integration, which is a very interesting point, which is basically taken from the geographic uh, framework, is the spatial integration, which means that you are defining a particular region. Let us understand in the context of India, like an area could be a village, village could be an area. You just uh, aggregate a few villages, it is known as cluster of villages that can also be area of micro planning then cluster of villages are further integrated like in indian situation we call community development blocks this is this block is a very wonderful idea of uh, micro planning spatial integration and then over and above you have certain urban areas and then there is a district below district there is a block below block there are cluster of villages, there are villages. So any one out of these four or five, what we call special hierarchy, can be termed as a micro area for micro planning. Now we will discuss the detail that why a village cannot be taken as a micro region or why a village cannot be taken as a unit of micro planning. Generally in India, there is a debate in the last 60 years where on one side we say that community development block could be an area of micro planning or in many of the ways we say that uh, the district could be a unit of micro planning but here let me just quickly conclude is that when you define micro planning uh, what a definition of micro planning can be done is that when we focus on the potentialities, on the constraints, on the opportunities of a particular area. And then the state does the location allocation decision that is called micro planning. This is one very important dimension. Second dimension is that micro planning is micro planning if it is following the integrated area development planning. When I say integrated area development planning, I mean integration of three important component. The sectional component where you have gender, you have different communities, you have different agricultural, non-agricultural population, etc, etc. You have sectoral integration when your whole system is divided into different sectors, agricultural, rural, non-rural, non industrial, etc, etc. And the third and very critical is that you have a special hierarchy and you try to link those hierarchies. And that itself is giving a very interesting background for uh, micro uh, planning. Till this time, we have uh, understood uh, the basic idea of micro planning. But uh, I think uh, I take this opportunity to further explain and elaborate this concept by giving you some of the examples from the Indian economy. Now, you can see in any of the economy in the underdeveloped economies, whether African subcontinent or Latin American subcontinent or Asian subcontinent, you will find that all the underdeveloped economies are passing through a very transitional phase wherein they are on one side focusing on marketization on the other side role of state is gradually you know focusing at the lower level now keeping in view the indian scenario as we know that initially we started with macro planning the first five-year plan started in 1951 and you know there there is a separate paper wherein you have in detail analyzed the the whole planning process, I'm not going into that detail, but if you focus on the basic idea of micro planning, especially when the third five year plan was started, then there was a realization which says that we have to focus on the local needs and for which 
a decentralized planning framework has to be done. There were a lot of experimentation which have been carried out in the Indian economy. You are very well aware that the whole idea of develop, community development block was initiated during the first five year plan and it was basically a, a very unique study uh, which was carried out wherein the community, the whole country was divided into different community development blocks within the states. So the idea about uh, micro planning was developed, gradually it was developed, uh, but main focus was started from third five year plan. If you quickly review this whole process, you will find that uh, from the first five year plan up to 12th five year plan, and now we know that the basic idea of five year plan has been completely abandoned, and there is a new concept of planning which is now uh, being uh, elaborated, being advocated, wherein they are thinking in terms of three years plan, and there is a new institution which is known as NITI, Niti uh, Ayog. Uh, we will talk about that later on, but uh, here what I am you know, interested to explain to you is that between 1951 to say 2015, now this is a very unique time frame, and in this unique time frame, gradually micro planning advocacy has been placed into the public policy framework. Now, you see, there are two basic aspects on which the micro planning advocacy has been done. In one aspect, we are simply talking about the methodology of micro planning. That itself is a very important dimension. On the other side, we are talking about because micro planning cannot be initiated if there are no institutions, means if there are no governments. And you are very well aware is that in the Indian context, there is a national government or you can call federal government, you can call union government, there is a state government and the third government which is a very important thing is called the local self-government. You are fully aware is that during 50s there was the basic debate between Gandhi and uh, Ambedkar. That debate itself was a debate on decentralization. That itself is a separate uh, area of study. But you remember is that the whole idea of micro planning, whole idea of a structural framework or institutional framework of micro planning was based on the Gandhian idea of uh, institutions and we generally know about that institutional framework as a Panchayati Raj framework or we can elaborate it as a local self-government or local governance framework. Now governance itself is a very important idea. Yeah, I In the initial phase I was referring that uh, one uh, Nobel laureate economist, Dr. William Sons, he got in 2009 Nobel Prize in Economics wherein he talks about the governance. That itself you can find that linkage. But what I am saying is that during the 50s, there was a committee uh, constituted by Government of India. It, uh, it was known as Balwant Rai Mehta Committee. And that committee basically provided a kind of three-tier structure for the local self-government. The village level, the block level, and the district level. And there are different nomenclature. But that time, the whole idea of local governance for micro planning, I can say, was just a wish list. It was your wish which says that, okay, this is an idealistic scenario where the welfare state has a very positive role at the decentralized level. But gradually, it was realized that uh, this uh, wish list is to be converted into a constitutional framework. Uh, the Balwantra Mehta Committee created a big upheaval in the uh, whole Indian polity and Indian development framework 
and uh, the report was published in 1957 it's a detailed report i think many of my friends those who are really interested they must go into that the report and you will find a very interesting analysis and then you will be able to see lot of interesting correlates now in between there was one another report which was again on the institutional structure of the local self government uh was the ashok mehta committee report it was published in 1978 wherein they focused on the block as a unit of governance now you see the basic debate you have three levels you have two levels you have various levels and that debate you know the balwant rai mehta committee report in 1957 the ashok mehta committee report in 1978 it goes on and ultimately it resulted into the one constitutional amendment in 1992 the famous constitutional amendment the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment wherein all the local self government and local planning and micro planning has been placed as a part of the constitution and that itself is shows the relevance of micro planning and you see in the context of india it took almost 60 years say from 1947 to 1992 and by simply designing a kind of institutional framework putting into a beautiful piece of paper putting into a constitution that itself is not sufficient unless and otherwise we try to establish these institution at the grassroots level 1992 a major constitutional amendment has been made these are the two amendments these are very unique amendments so what i am saying that during last 60 70 years you have one set of process which was mainly focusing on the institutional structures the other dimension is that there were efforts which were made by the government of india which were mainly focusing on the methodology because you know planning is not a haphazard activity planning is not a just a wish list planning is not just creating a kind of heavy document with full of maps and uh, detailed analysis no planning is a methodology there is a system means uh, you know you have set of objectives you have set of framework you have set of uh, funds available finance available implementation mechanism that itself is a big process now again i would like to give you only two examples there are a lot of other things in the third five year plan 1969 there were certain methodological guidelines which were developed by the government of india for district planning now that time it was known as district planning again in 1978 there was uh, a very unique uh, committee which was focusing on the block level planning you might have heard professor ml dantwala it is popularly known as dantwala committee in 1978 it talks about the methodology of block level planning technically it is the method- methodology of micro planning but it is the block level planning the process goes on and in 1984 there is a very interesting work which was published in two volumes by government of india it was the working group which was constituted uh, by the government of india on the district planning headed by professor hanumant rao they analyzed that whole framework and uh, methodological framework of micro planning now you see there is a methodology there are institutional structures and mainly the two methodological examples that i am giving you the dantwala committee report constituted by government of india and the hanumant rao committee report which was again constituted by the government of india and on the other side i just referred the balwant rao mehta committee and again the ashok mehta committee 78 and these all these four things are blended into the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendments so now what is the conclusion of this whole genesis of uh, micro planning in india we have seen that gradually the whole micro planning process has been put into the framework of indian constitution so when anything which is a part of indian constitution definitely it is a part of our syllabus 
definitely it is a part and parcel of all the development framework which is being carried out by the development administration you might have heard about the finance commission finance commission talks about the availability of resources so what i am saying that the location allocation functions are decided on the basis of certain processes certain methodologies certain institutional structure which are evolved in the process and these were evolved in the indian framework now this is the genesis and i hope that you will appreciate and i request you to go through some of the uh, contents which are already available there for your perusal you must go through it and try to see and try to ask question ask ourselves ask myself my role is to facilitate your learning process now this is the basic genesis it can happen in any of the underdeveloped country there are certain set of situation ultimately micro planning is a 21st century reality and it is going to be gradually established and going to be gradually institutionalized uh, so that we can improve the quality of human development the two other dimensions are also important in this process one is why we talk about micro planning uh, what is the relevance of micro planning what is the justification of micro planning why macro planning the bigger planning framework is uh, not able to fulfill the objectives of the micro planning why there is a need of macro planning as such which means that can it be left to the market forces and everything can be settled by the market so these questions are to be answered in this section which we will discuss we will underline the justification and the relevance of the micro planning uh, now we are talking about uh, in detail that why micro planning is justified uh, for what purpose micro planning is used the very important point as i was mentioning is that that this whole process of micro planning is a paradigm shift in the development economics now before we go into the justification details things are to be understood in a very crystal clear manner is that micro planning is to be seen in a multi planning framework what i mean by multi planning framework is that you have a a country economy whatsoever is the uh, size of the economy it doesn't matter but here in in our context you know we can easily understand by giving example from indian economy you have a bigger federal system so you have a macro planning where whole planning framework is done for the whole country you have different states what you call provincial or state level planning and then below the state you have the district and below district you have block below block you have cluster of villages and below cluster of villages you have the villages now micro planning is not a substitute to the whole planning process or we can say to the macro planning process micro planning is a complementary phenomenon which is to be analyzed to be seen to fulfill the national objective for economic social and human development so it's a complementary and in a very simple language we can say it's a team playing different actors working at different uh, special level are playing different games which ultimately leading to improvement in the quality of um, human life and as we have already seen that in the last 70 years the experiment with the macro planning with the national planning with the state planning ultimately lead to realize is that we have to formulate and implement the plans at the local level now when we talk about the micro planning framework there is very important thing 
because planning is a is an activity for which you need administrative capacities you need technical capacities like database you need people who can prepare a comprehensive documentation so which means that you have those capacities at the micro level whatsoever is the macro level it could be a village it could be a block it could be a district in the indian context so indian context as i mentioned is that the need and the realization of micro planning has been very well understood in the historical context but the present debate is that whether the micro planning unit is to be taken the block community development block or that is to be taken as district as i mentioned the empirical evidences based on some of the capacities available based on the experiences the viability of a particular spatial area we are focusing the unit of micro planning at the district level so this whole micro planning is to be put into the multi plan objectives and multi plan framework and the capacities and capabilities are important in this whole process it is in this context the whole framework if we specifically focus on india that all these are very well explicitly analyzed in the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendments which are initiated in 1992 and there is a empirical justification for micro planning in the indian context you can see that our constitution is amended and there are two what we call schedules are placed in our constitution one is called the 11th schedule other one is called the 12th schedule now in the 11th schedule there are 29 items or 29 functions in the 12th schedule there are uh, around 18 functions and all these functions are to be planned at the district level now the whole planning process and its justification is to be supported uh, by uh, giving you some more empirical evidences you may recall that uh, there were millennium development goals which were initiated in 2000 and which were supposed to be achieved by 2015 but these were not achieved millennium development goals are mainly broadly what we can say that these are nothing but the human development aspects concerned with your livelihood concerned with your poverty eradication concerned with your environmental sustainability concerned with your educational entitlements your health entitlements the same framework which you have already studied but unfortunately despite the consent which was given by all the un member countries the millennium development goals were not achieved by 2015 now interestingly what they have done there was un general assembly which was discussed in detail and in september 2015 the millennium development goals were converted into sustainable development goals there are 17 sustainable development goals which are further converted into 169 what we can call associated targets with the sustainable development goals i request you to kindly go through those specific uh, websites which are already given with this uh, content and try to see that how the local needs like you know poverty eradication like equity dimensions like gender equity like uh, as uh, i was mentioning that all the integrated area development functions are blended with the sustainable development goals and these sustainable development goals are to be achieved by 2030 what i am saying is that 
because the one of the important factors for non achievement of the millennium development goal was because there was less emphasis on micro planning so that's why the un general assembly in september 2015 identified sustainable development goals where environmental or uh, what we say sustainable livelihood issues are very very important where we talk about environmental justice where we talk about climate change where we talk about lot of interesting thing and in the multi planning framework the micro planning process there are two or three important aspects which are justifying the micro planning let me uh, put uh, these things so that you know you will be able to appreciate what you are discussing what you are talking about is relevant now the whole debate between the market efficiency between the state level intervention etc are going on very recently there is a beautiful book which is published by one french economist his name was piketty and the title of that book is the capital in 21st century there he mainly focuses that during the last 100 years the equity dimension has not been properly taken into consideration and the equity is an important area you may recall that kuznets curve could be converted into equity and non equity aspect you may recall is that what kuznet says that in the initial process of development there is an increase in the inequity but gradually the increase as your per capita income goes up your equity has been achieved the piketty has challenged that idea and said that in the last 100 years your inequalities among nations among different sections among different sectors is being increasing so i'm not saying that micro planning is the alternative i'm just saying micro planning is a process through which you will be able to generate a sustainable livelihood so that one of the dimensions which are concerned with economic planning and development is like equity may be achieved so this is something very important and that's why the micro planning aspects are taken into consideration now there is interestingly i want to refer in 2009 uh, williamson got a nobel prize you know, while talking about the governance and transaction cost related issues now what i am saying is that now the whole debate in the public sphere is improving the quality of governance and governance if you go through the world development reports if you go through the undp reports on human development if you go through the asian development reports there are multiple multilateral agencies which are working in the area of governance so the point i am making is that the governance means when your transaction cost are being reduced what i am saying that with the micro planning process you can improve the quality of governance ultimately leading to improve the quality of public services what i mean by public services like you can take example of health service you can take example of educational service you can take example of health hygiene and poverty eradication and all these things now the quality of service would be much better with the micro planning process there are plenty of literature which is supporting this particular idea not only the williamson but there are lot of other literature which really support this particular point there is another important dimension when you say micro planning means it is to be done at the decentralized level at the local level it is actually focusing on integrated dimensions of the development it is integrated like you know our human body is integrated our mind is integrated with our physical system and all these things in the similar manner a particular micro planning unit it may be district it may be block depending on your choice and your capabilities that i mentioned because there is no final answer to this debate but what i am saying that 
that whole unit of micro planning there are two objectives one you want to improve the efficiency of the public services ultimately in the location allocation decision what you are doing you are taking decision investment decision and then ultimately locating those decisions i can give you one example like what you are doing you are saying okay at this particular point of a space at this particular place a school is going to be opened a primary school is going to be opened at this particular space a particular primary health center is to be open at this particular space agricultural extension centers are to be opened so that is exactly what decision you are taking now my point is that with this kind of decision you are improving the quality of public services if you are making accessible to those services if the efficiency of services are good definitely the public services are going to serve the bigger social cause there is another important dimension is that not only efficiency but with the micro planning now this is very important to be to, to be understood in a deeper sense micro planning actually empowers people like the villagers the hard to reach group of population the people living in the remote areas like forest areas the people in the islands the people in the desert areas the people living in the slum areas now if they participate now that itself is a very important area that participation is an integral component of micro planning i just want to mention one nobel laureate amartya sen who said that participation as such is an objective of development which means that i am not interested in improving the quality of public services it may be a myopic statement but that empowerment if this there is active participation of the poor and marginalized in the process of micro planning then their empowerment will be there and ultimately if the people are empowered then your development objectives are going to be achieved i can give you example one is focusing on efficiency other one is focusing on the participation as an equity objective where your ultimate uh, things are leading to empowerment especially some of the initiatives which are created which are taken under the watershed management where you want to improve the vegetation cover tree cover or you want to plant uh, various trees there your objective is to plant trees and then you use a participatory micro planning approach where you ask people that to participate in the process by giving incentives and so so that uh, your forest cover may be increased this is one approach second approach is that like uh, the example i can give you from indian economy is the example arising out of the 73rd and 74th panchayati raj amendments or local self government amendments where they say that there is take this example that the constitution is amended where women's participation there is a particular reservation for women panchayati raj or local self government members so once you give 30% or 50% of the reservation to the women so which means that ultimately the women are participating in that process that itself is an objective what amartya sen said is that all efforts which we are doing ultimately are improving the quality of human life quality of human life can only be improved or can be improved apart from other initiatives which are undertaken under the efficiency category if you empower people by providing them a legal or what you call entitlement or a constitutional approach for participating in the process so this is a very important debate in the last 20 years and 
what we can say in our limited context of micro planning, what we can say that the micro planning is ultimately leading to empowerment. And this whole process of participation is a very unique, very powerful foundational component of micro planning. And that's why you see in every country, you talk about Pakistan, talk about Nepal, you can take any example from African country, you can take any example from Latin American country, this whole idea of participation, there's a plenty of material which is available. In the Indian context, I'm sure, I hope that uh, on the basis of our discussion, you will be able to go through some of the links which I'm giving at the end of uh, this session. And uh, the, these links are taken from uh, UNDP reports, these links are taken from World Bank Development Reports, these links are taken from Government of India, Ministry of Rural Development Reports and the Ministry of Panchayati Raj Reports. Now, this is the broad justification. Now, the last section of this whole presentation is little theoretical but very simple, which is focusing on how you decide a particular unit for micro planning. Right? Or uh, technically we can say that how you decide a region for which you go for planning. So, number one, when you decide a particular unit for planning, which we call region, so there are three aspects. You decide on the basis of homogeneity. When you decide on the basis a particular area, like you, you can say that it is a coastal area, you can say it is a mountain area, or maybe you can say it is a tribal area, you can decide various parameters. And these parameters can be called as a unifying characteristics, where you can talk about economic characteristics, you can talk about uh, physiographic characteristics, you can talk about agroclimatic characteristics. There is a very unique uh, agroclimatic regional planning which was long back initiated by the uh, planning commission so which means this is very simple to understand you identify one area based on the homogeneity now when you decide the region or micro planning unit on the basis of homogeneity then uh, you try to analyze that particular region or that particular planning unit with the other region. What I am saying, what is happening within that region is not concerned with you. You say that these are the mountain areas. There are various programs which are initiated by the government of India focusing on this particular approach. So this is one aspect or one dimension of uh, identifying a particular region. There is another and very interesting aspect is called a nodal region. You decide a region on the basis of the nodality or on the basis of the functionality or on the basis of the centrality of a particular function. I can give you one example. Like, suppose there is a primary health center at a particular point. Now, this primary uh, health center serves, say, uh, around, say, 20,000 population. And, you know, people are coming from distance. Take example of rural areas, say 10 kilometer distance, people are coming and visiting primary health center for health purpose. Now, so that area from where the people are coming to use this particular public service is the region. So this is called functional region. So for a particular function, people are coming to this particular point, node means that center. People are coming at this particular node from a category. And interestingly, when you say node, it is not only the primary health center, there will be a market, there will be some kind of schools, there will be some kind of other facilities. So gradually the functionality of a particular node is not unipolar, it is a multifunctionality, means health services would be there, some schools would be there, some colleges would be there, some kind of market or various other kinds of things are there. So, 
here the internal flow of a particular region is very important. We are not concerned what is happening out of the region, but we are more concerned. And this is very important, I can say, development uh, framework. Now, you have homogeneity character, and this is the heterogeneity character. Means, you know, you are not concerned about uh, the homogeneity, but you are concerned about the functionality. For a particular function, the people are depending on that particular node. Now, the third dimension is called the planning region and that is very important now what you do as a planner you superimpose the the functionality and homogeneity over each other and appreciating the administrative units of a particular area which means that like uh, you have a community development block you try to see that how the functionality and homogeneity of community development block is fulfilling the need because ultimately for improving the quality of governance for ensuring participation for fulfilling the local needs local aspiration and all these things you need to take into consideration both the homogeneity as well as functionality dimension this is easier said than done if you really try to see around you wherever you are if you are in the rural area you try to see how these things are being done so generally what we do that the functionality and homogeneity aspects are superimposed on the administrative region and then that administrative region is known as planning region generally in our context a block or a district can be a planning region so these are the, the concept of region where we see how the spatial dispersion of economic activities are being carried out. And this spatial dispersion and the coherence of all such kind of activities ultimately lead to improve the quality of human lives. So this is just, just an idea uh, to really provoke you to think in that, dimension, in that direction and in case if you have any other, uh, I can say, feature or any other conceptual framework to decide a particular region, you can interact with us on various issues and we'll be very happy to respond to. Now, I'm summing up this whole uh, module you see this is an introductory module of micro planning what we did we we have given you little theoretical framework we have given you practices the practical dimensions based on Indian economy to to define the micro planning and basically because examples and case studies are easier way to understand a particular concept we have given you the genesis of micro planning based on the 70 years of the history of indian economy after the uh, the post independence history of indian economy where you analyze that gradually the whole issue of micro planning has been put into practice and now in the, some of the recent initiatives which are taken by the government of India under the Niti Aayog are more and more focusing on the cooperative federalism which is again a, a, a system which evolved uh, based on delegation and devolution of the uh, functions and resources. Then we analyzed in this module that why micro planning is needed. You have already seen that when we talk about micro planning, we are not saying that this is the end. We are not saying that this is a substitute. We are saying that there is a multi planning framework, and within that multi planning framework, your system is needed, and micro planning is a very important complementary activity. We have analyzed is that the by giving example from multi, multi uh, what you call the Millennium Development Goals to sustainable development goals and how we are shifting the targets 
from 2015 to 2030, that itself is an evidence which shows that because we were unable to achieve those targets, and one of the important component is that there was lack of micro planning. Micro planning is a easier said than done concept. There are a lot of other complicated social, political, administrative, and economic complicated factors. And these factors ultimately, I think, pushing our system to uh, be more transparent, to, to be more accountable, because as we have already seen is that micro planning is justified for improving the quality of governance, for ensuring accountability, for ensuring transparency, for empowering the people, that participation that itself is, is a very important uh, component, and for ensuring a system, an equitable system. So this is, in a nutshell, the justification. And then finally, we try to give you a little theoretical input about, okay, you want to do planning, but uh, uh, what would be some of the other characteristics of that uh, uh, planning region? So one characteristics would be the homogeneity characteristics. You have to take into consideration because you cannot plan you know, like uh, you have a mountain region and you have a coastal region. Now, the, the, the planning for these two regions would be different. So what I'm saying that homogeneity dimension would be very important. However, the internal characteristics factors are important to be decided, which we will talk about in some of the other uh, modules. But here in this context, what we said that you, you need homogeneity. And the other very important point is that you need functionality because ultimately a function is to be delivered to the people and if it is not delivered efficiently, there's no micro planning. And that's why you need to see how much schools are to be opened, where these schools are to be opened, how the health centers are to be opened, how the whole issue of human development or poverty eradication are to be initiated. And these further we will elaborate these theoretical concepts in the uh, last module where I will give you a few more case studies to you so that you will be able to appreciate that point. So this is in a nutshell the basic idea of micro planning, the genesis of micro planning, the justification of micro planning and the overall typology of a region. I hope you enjoyed the contents.